made me new and he gave me a hope in the future. You can't get excited about that. There's something wrong with that. So, praise God. Uh, we're, we're in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 10. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 10. <clears throat> When I was growing up, uh, there was a family in our church who went through a difficult time, and uh, their little girl, she was about seven years old, had crawled up on a metal gate, <clears throat> and the gate fell over on her and killed her. Uh, her family was struggling naturally, and uh, her father uh, left his place of leadership in the church and left the church, and as far as I know, has never been back. Uh, but you know, in times where life is difficult, we need to turn to Jesus. Amen. You know what I found? It's better to go through the trial. Everybody's got trial, right? Better to go through the trial with Jesus than to go through the trial with Adam. And uh, we, we turn to Jesus and we find what we need. <laughs> uh, with all the things that are going on in our lives, all the challenges that there are, I thank God that he is able to sustain his people. He's able to supply what we need. Uh, Paul is writing this from prison. <clears throat> so he's going through a time of difficulty himself. And he's going to tell us what he is doing. And give us an example to follow for those times when life is hard. When we're struggling. Uh, what we can do. And uh, how we can respond to the circumstances that we face. And so uh, we need to lift our eyes to Jesus uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit in times of difficulty. What to do when life is hard. So look with me at verse 10. It says, I rejoiced in the Lord greatly because once again you renewed your care for me. You were in fact concerned about me but lacked the opportunity to show it. I don't say this out of need. For I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I find myself. I know both how to make do with a little, and I know how to make do with a lot. <clears throat> in any and all circumstances, I've learned the secret of being content, whether well-fed or hungry, whether in abundance or need. <clears throat> I am able to do all things through him who strengthens me. Still, you did well by partnering with me in my hardship. And you Philippians know that in early days in the gospel, <clears throat> when I left Macedonia, no church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving except you alone. For even in Thessalonica, you sent gifts for my need several times. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the profit that is increasing to your account. But I have received everything in full, and I have an abundance, and I am fully supplied having received from Epaphroditus what you provided, a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God. And my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Now to our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Greet every saint in Christ Jesus. The brothers who are with me send you greetings. All the saints send you greetings, especially those who belong to Caesar's household. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. So what to do with life is hard. What steps can we take? Well, we need to rejoice in the Lord. We need to rejoice in the Lord. He says, I rejoice in the Lord greatly. Wait a second, Paul. I thought you were in prison. People don't rejoice in prison. People are not excited uh, in prison. How can you possibly rejoice in prison? He says, because I am worshiping God through the power of the Holy Spirit. Did you know when you're struggling in worship, you can call upon the Lord's name and he can help you worship? Listen, there's times I've done that standing right up here. Oh, Lord, I'm struggling. Maybe I've had a, a, a rough weekend and I'm tired. Or perhaps there's something that has gone wrong. And I've been concerned and worried. I said, Lord, I'm just distracted. Lord, would you please help me worship in this situation? Help me worship in this circumstance. And he has been faithful to help me. Uh, through God, we can worship and we can rejoice no matter what we're facing in life. <clears throat> the tears may fall. 
The struggle may be real, but even in the midst of tears and struggle, we can have joy as we focus upon the Lord Jesus Christ and worship Him and honor Him. He says, I rejoice because you have remembered me. You have helped me. Uh, we can rejoice in the good things God is doing in the lives of other people, can't we? We can thank God for what he's doing. We can praise God for the provision that he supplied for our need. Uh, it, it's amazing to me how God is able to provide just the right thing at just the right time that we need. He is so faithful. He's so good. I think of Hagar. She's, she's out there by the, the well. Uh, hasn't seen uh, the well. But she's weeping, thinking that she and her son are going to die. Don't let me see the boy die. And, uh, and, and God appears to her and speaks into her life and encourages her right where she is. And the Bible says she lifted up her eyes and saw the place of water. And, uh, and God met her need. God is able to meet our need, but he's also able to help us rejoice in the midst of the trial. You can praise the Lord Jesus as an act of the will. You can thank God as an act of the will. And, and just be stubborn about it. Did you know that uh, when things go wrong for us in life, there's always a blessing to look for? If you know Jesus Christ, there's always a blessing to look for. Thank God, we, we just, Philip was singing about just a moment ago, all, all my sins are forgiven. I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Listen, my hope is glory. One day I'm going to leave this world behind. I'm going to have a new body. I'm going to, to live in a place of perfect righteousness. No sickness, no pain, no death, no heartache. Hallelujah. That doesn't change with my circumstances. I can still praise Jesus even in the trial. Paul says, I have, I've learned to do that. I, I've learned to rejoice in the Lord. So here I am riding from the prison cell rejoicing. So... <clears throat> How do you deal with, with life when it's hard? Well, what do you do? Well, what steps can you take? You can rejoice in the Lord. Secondly, you need to learn contentment. Learn contentment. Verse 11. I don't say this out of need, for I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I find myself. So... <clears throat> They've sent Paul a gift. You know, in those days, it wasn't like today where if you went to prison, you got three squares today and cable TV. Uh, back in those days, when you went to prison, you were in prison. I mean, they didn't supply you any clothing. They didn't supply you any food. Uh, if your friends didn't bring it to you, you just went without. <clears throat> and so, <clears throat> he says, uh, I have learned to be content. I have learned, how could he be content in the circumstances he was facing? Because he knew God was with him. He knew God was able to take care of him. You see, he's not manipulating the Philippians to try to get more money out of them. He's not saying, listen, yeah, it's about time you sent me some money. How about sending me some more? You know, uh, I, I remember a few years back, uh, there was a fellow that said, I'm going to die if you don't give this much money. Uh, <clears throat> I didn't send him any money. But anyway, uh, but uh, listen, if you know Jesus Christ, you don't have to rely on the gifts of people. God may use people, but God is your supply. The Lord is the one who supplies our need. So Paul says, I can be content. Why? Because I'm not worried about what tomorrow brings. I know who walks with me in that tomorrow, and he is able to supply what I need. So I can be content. Paul elsewhere says, I've been, I'm content in hardships. I'm content in persecutions and, and, and weakness and all of these things, sickness, all of these things. Why? Because when I am weak, I have found that the power of God rests upon my life. When I'm struggling, I found that God comes alongside and gives me the power and strength. To be content. Jesus said, uh, be content with, with what you have. A man's life doesn't cons consist in the abundance of riches. Did you know there's a lot of people around us uh, that, that are just empty? They have all that money can buy, but they don't have Jesus Christ. 
And listen, I don't care how much you have. Uh, someone once asked uh, Rockefeller how much would be enough to satisfy him. He said, just a little bit more. <laughs> you know, that's the way it is with money. It, it, there's never enough to truly satisfy the need of the human soul. Only Jesus can satisfy the soul. Amen. When you have Jesus, you can have contentment because he is with you. You rely upon him. Uh, I think about Moses. He called upon the Lord uh, when they needed water in the wilderness, and God supplied water from a rock. God supplied food from manna each day. He gave him just a, enough to get him through each day. Enough to get the Israelites through each day. And they never, they never went hungry. God is able to supply our needs. Jesus was, uh, one time he was talking to the disciples, he, they, they said, well, well Lord, uh, uh, what are we going to eat? And you know, he said, I have food to eat that you don't know about. He's talking about the spiritual riches that God supplies. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. There is a deeper hunger of the soul that only Jesus can fill. And when you have him, you can have contentment, even in difficult circumstances. So he says, I've learned to be content. I've learned to have much. I've learned to have little. Uh, I, I've learned all these different, but why? Paul was traveling from place to place. Some places, uh, people were very generous to him and, and took good care. Other places, they were poor. They didn't have a lot to give. And so he learned whatever situation he goes to, Jesus Christ is with me. I don't have to fear. He will supply my need. So learn contentment. Uh, when you're going through a difficult situation. What to do when life is hard? Rejoice in the Lord. Learn contentment. Thirdly, rely on Jesus. Rely on Jesus. Verse 13. He says, I am able to do all things through him who strengthens me. I'm able to do all things through him who strengthens me. Did you know that God was able to provide the strength that you need? I love what Paul says in 2 Corinthians. He, he's, he's kind of sharing from his heart. He says, look, we were struggling. We despaired even of life. But that's so we could know that there's somebody who could raise us up from the dead. Isn't that wonderful? Listen, we're the people of the resurrection. Do you know that? Do you feel like you're in in your emotions? Do you feel that you're in in your physical strength? In your spiritual life? Are you struggling? Lift up your head, child of God. You're a child of the King. And He raises dead things back to life. He can satisfy your need. Rely on Him. Call upon His name. Let him know what your struggle is. Let him know what your weakness is. And ask him for help. He is able to do all things. I can do all things. Paul says, I've learned I can go through anything that comes my way. Because the Lord is supplying what I need. So rely on him. Uh, faith is the posture of our hearts when we rely upon the Lord. Listen. That is a key to the Christian life. Did you know you can't rely on yourself to get you to heaven? You can't. No matter how good you are. Somebody said it's like trying to throw a baseball across the Grand Canyon. Some people may get it farther than others, but nobody gets it across. You and I are not good enough to get to heaven. We're sinners in need of God's grace. But praise God, he made a way. He sent Jesus who died on the cross in our place and rose again. And uh, we can trust in Jesus. You know, forsaking all. My own way of life. My own way of living. I trust him. I'm choosing to follow you, Jesus. And I receive the gift of eternal life. If you don't receive it as a gift, you can't get there. There's no other way. There's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must. Be saved. No other way. It's a gift of God's grace. But oh, you can't get to heaven yourself. You can't live the Christian life yourself. You know what Jesus said we could do on our own? 
He said, apart from me, you can do nothing. <coughs> nothing. Sometimes you, if, you, if you live in the Christian life a while, and you begin to you say, well, you know, I'm doing pretty well. I, I think I, I remember one, one season of my life, I thought, you know, I'm, I'm doing pretty well. And God allowed some things in my life, and, and my heart changed toward the Lord, and, and I realized all God has to do is withdraw his hand, and I will. I depend upon him for every single breath that I take, every single day that I live. I can't live the Christian life without him. You say, well, you're a preacher. How can you say that? Listen, I'm going to tell you something. Preachers don't have any secrets that God's people don't have. We all depend on Jesus. There's no other way to live the Christian life than by faith. You can't exercise your gifts in the way that God wants you to exercise them without his help. You can't. Uh, the best giftedness that you have will not get the job done. You need the power of the Lord. And so you rely upon him. You call upon his name. You ask him to bless. I remember when I was a new, a new preacher, I'd forget to pray. Isn't that a crazy thing for a preacher to say? I would. I'd forget to pray about my message. <clears throat> but then I knew it Sunday. <laughs> and everybody else knew it too. <laughs> Listen, I will tell you something. There's something about calling on the name of the Lord for help. God supplies the help when we ask him for it. When we rely upon him. He says, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Galatians 2.20, he says, not I, but Christ who lives in me. So we rely on Jesus. He is the one who helps us and carries us through in difficult times. So what to do when life is hard? Rejoice in the Lord. Learn contentment. Rely on Jesus. Fellowship by receiving. Look at verse 14. He says, still you did well by partnering with me in my hardship. That word partnering, uh, you may have something like help or something like that. Uh, this is a word that is associated with the spiritual fellowship of God's people. Koinonia is the noun version of this word. Um, <clears throat> Paul had done much for the Philippians, right? He had established his church. He, he, he won people to faith in Christ. He had ministered to them and helped them grow. He'd done all these things. But now Paul is in it. And so the church is now reaching out to him and providing material resources for him to help him in his time of need. And he took it. Did you know there are sometimes you're going to be in me, and there's sometimes I'm going to be in me, and we all need each other, <laughs> right? Sometimes we just need to do fellowship by receiving. If you're going through a difficult time, can I tell you something? Don't be ashamed to go up to a brother or sister in Christ and say, hey, I'm struggling. The devil's eating my lunch, or, or you know, I, I, I'm struggling with my, with my uh family life. I'm struggling uh, in my job. Or I'm struggling. And, and, and let somebody know and ask them to pray for you. I pray for a lot of people over the years, but you know, sometimes I need prayer. Sometimes I go to, and I've got some folks I, I go to, I say, would you please pray for me? Uh, I am struggling. Uh, we, we fellowship by receiving. So a lot of times we think of fellowship, well, what can I do for somebody else? And that's good. We should think that. But fellowship is also receiving. You come here to this church uh, to gather together. You hear a message. You're receiving, right? You're also giving as you pray for others. And maybe they share a need or uh, maybe you say a word of encouragement. You're ministering to somebody else. Perhaps you offer to do some kind of service during the week to help somebody out. Uh, so there's this give and take that happens. And sometimes you're on the mountaintop and your brother is in the valley. And then sometimes your brother's on the mountaintop and you're in the valley. But we're all here for each other. And sometimes we're good at giving, but we're not good at receiving. Paul fellowships by receiving. And uh, I think fellowship is at its best 
when all of us are receiving and giving to one another. It's a beautiful thing. Um, sometimes uh, that fellowship may be uh, help, of, help of finance issue. Um, our responsibility in that case is first to the, to the members of this church, right? Uh, and then as we're able uh, outside. But uh, uh, listen, uh, we fellowship together. The early church, did you know some of them sold fields because there were some people in the church that were poor and were in just an urgent need? They sold fields to help their brothers and sisters in Christ. That's how, that's, that's the fellowship that was happening there. Uh, <clears throat> sometimes fellowship might be instruction in how to live life. That's a great way to bless somebody else. Sometimes you need that instruction, don't you? Did you know... One of the, the gifts that God talks about in the New Testament is the gift of wisdom. Why do you need the gift of wisdom? Do you share that wisdom with somebody else? Who needs it, right? Uh, I thank God. I've had some people uh, over the years that I've been able to go to and say, hey, I'm struggling with such and such. And they just have all this wisdom and they'll speak into my life. And what a blessing that is. If you need wisdom, that's another way you can receive from the body of Christ. And we could go down the list. There's, there's many ways we can uh, contribute to one another and help one another. But this fellowship by receiving is important. When that time comes when you're struggling, um, in, the, in the wisdom literature in the Old Testament, it says uh, uh, two are better than one because one can help the other. But, uh, but what of the man who, who falls down and there's nobody to lift him up? Listen, if you're struggling, don't be afraid to have God's people pick you up. That's what we're here for, right? Uh, so let's, so, so fellowship by receiving. All right. So what to do when life is hard? What steps can we take? Well, rejoice the Lord. Learn contentment. Rely on Jesus. Fellowship by receiving and express Gratitude. Look at verse uh, 15. He says, No church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving except you alone. Now, what he's talking about here is not the, the regular offerings of the church in the local church. He's talking about their giving to help him in his ministry to others. Can I tell you something? You and I are doing the same thing. Brother Carlos has a ministry in El Salvador. And we're sharing with him in the matter of giving and receiving to support his ministry down there. And it's, it's making it possible for him, uh, it's, it's needed, it's, and it's making it possible for him to minister down there. And uh, we've seen some of those baptisms on Facebook, haven't we? We've seen what God's doing, uh, and I think there's much more that God's doing. And he's out there on the streets telling people the gospel. Listen, we're not going to know until we get to heaven how many people have been saved in the ministry of Brother Carlos who were saved in this very church. I get pumped up thinking about that. <laughs> uh, we're doing that. And Paul says to the Philippians, he says, you, you guys were the only church who did that for me. You helped in the matter of giving and receiving. He said, I, I praise God for you. I thank God for you. Thank you for your generosity and making this kingdom work possible. And so, as we give to missions, we're doing the same thing. We're fellowship. We're partnering uh, in this ministry. And he says, you, you are with me in this. Now, listen. When that missionary overseas leads that person to Christ, as you've given to that ministry, you've, you've led them to Christ. You have a hand in that. You've made it possible. Right? And it's going to be neat to see what God has done through those things someday when we get to heaven. Uh, but express gratitude. So when, when, uh, when you're going through a difficult time, sometimes it's easy to have a pity party, isn't it? Well, nobody else has ever gone through this that I'm going through. Ah, oh, that, this, uh, you know, that old song on Hee Haw, Bloom, Despair, and Agony on Me, you know. Uh, it, we start having a pity party and, oh, what are we going to do? Nobody else is suffering like me. Well, that's just not true. 
We, all the sufferings that people experience are common to man, the Bible says. Um, <clears throat> instead, refocus your thoughts to the good things that God has done and thank Him. God is the source of all good things. And then secondly, thank the people that help you out. Um, be focused on the good things God is doing for you, and it will change your attitude. Um, <clears throat> When problems are at every hand, it's easy to focus on the problems, isn't it? What are we going to do? If you've watched the news this week, you may be thinking, well, what are we going to do? Uh, uh, what's happening in the culture? How are we going to stop? Listen, I don't know. But one thing I do know, we need to let our light shine. We need to thank God. You know, sometimes Christians can get angry and bitter at the situation that we face with the culture when instead our hearts need to be filled with gratitude and joy and walking with God so that when we have those opportunities to make a difference, we can do that. Um, <clears throat> listen, God doesn't need us. Did you know God could change this culture in a heartbeat? He could. Uh, God, God is not, he doesn't break a sweat. Oh, I've never seen what's happening in America. God doesn't break a sweat. God is the Lord of the universe. As Philip was talking about earlier, he knows all the stars by name. We can't even count the stars, much less name them. He has a wisdom we cannot fathom. He has a power that we cannot fathom. So we just need to trust him with all the mess and be obedient to him so we can have the role that he wants us to have. And we need to focus upon what he's done for us that's good. And thank him. And thank the others around us. Um, <clears throat> when life is hard, what steps can you take? Rejoice in the Lord. Learn contentment. Rely on Jesus. Fellowship by receiving and express gratitude. Now all of these things that Paul is doing, he's doing because he has a relationship with Jesus Christ. This is something he's able to do because the Holy Spirit of God lives in him as he does in every Christian. Um, he is providing the power for Paul to be able to respond to his circumstances this way. And if you don't have Jesus, you don't have this power. You don't, you don't have the ability to live in God's joy despite what's going on around you, but you can have that because Jesus has paid the price for you to have that. He's done everything that needs to be done. Uh, he lived the perfect life we couldn't live. Somebody said every other religion on the planet is due. Christianity is done. The price is paid. Jesus lived the righteous life for us. He died the death that I deserved. He took the wrath of God and the justice of God that I richly deserved upon himself and died for it and said it is finished. It is paid in full. And he rose again in mighty power to show who he was. He has the authority to call us to salvation. So if you're here today and you don't know Jesus, you can begin a relationship with him right now. And you can make a choice. Um, and the Holy Spirit can help you make that choice. Even though he's not come to live in your heart, he will help you with this choice if you'll ask him to. Lord, would you help me surrender to you? Would you help me genuinely choose to turn from my sin in my own way to follow you? Will you help me receive this gift? in the way that I do. If you'll pray that in your heart right now, I believe God will help you with that. And you can come and make this decision. You can come to this altar and you can tell God in your own words uh, that you're choosing to surrender and receive that gift of eternal life. If you want to come here to me, I'll help you with a prayer uh, if you'd like, like me to help you with that. But make that decision and then you can have somebody to walk with you through those trials that you're facing uh, in, in this world. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for uh, this time. Lord, we thank you for speaking to us through your word. And Lord, we ask that you would help us to respond in faith and repentance and uh, obedience, Lord, to the things you've told us today in your word. And, and uh, Father, we can't, uh, but you can. Uh, Lord, we look to you for everything that we need. And uh, Lord, for those who are here today that don't know Jesus Christ, I pray that today... Uh, they would just choose in, in simple trust that you're able to help them 
uh, with the living of the Christian life, they'll say, Lord, I choose to turn from my sin and my way to follow Jesus. And I receive this gift of eternal life right now. I'm going to help them do that, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you need to make a decision, you want to give your life to Christ, uh, this is the time to do it. Uh, as the music begins to, to play, when we begin to sing, just come on down here to the front and uh, do what you need to do. If you need my help, just come say, hey, help me, preacher, and I'll help you with that decision. Uh, if you're here today and you have some other decision you need to make, maybe you've not been trusting God, relying on God in your life, you need to come to this altar and just say, Lord, help me rely on you and trust you in my circumstance. Uh, if you're here today, maybe God has led you to be a part of this church and you just sense that in your spirit. This is where you're supposed to be. Uh, you can come forward and make a decision to join with this church and we can let you know uh, what uh, what that will entail and uh, uh, you know uh, what we need from you and so forth. Um, but that would be a great thing to do today. Um, maybe you're here today and God has put a, a burden on your heart for some area of ministry to serve him. You'd like to surrender to do that as God leads you to do it. You, you come, Jesus. Let's stand. You come down.